Hey guys, it's James here from eBass Guitar and in today's bass guitar lesson, I wanna show you five killer bass lines which are guaranteed to make the crowd go wild. I'll see you in the lesson. Here's the thing, being a bass player in a band, we perform a super important role which is absolutely invaluable because we are the link between the rhythm, typically found in the drum part, and the harmony, which is normally found in the guitars and the piano, by creating our bass lines. And a song without a bass line normally sounds very, very empty. But the thing about bass lines is they're not the most catchy thing on the planet. They're normally not the most instantly recognizable thing like they are in guitars and piano parts. I'm sure you've all heard legendary guitar intros like Day Tripper, You've Really Got Me or Sweet Child of Mine. The crowd goes absolutely wild when they hear those intros. You can even find them in piano parts too, like Jump by Van Halen or Bohemian Rhapsody. You just got to hear those musical intros and the crowd will go nuts. But that happens less so in the bass, but it does happen. So today I wanna to show you five bass lines that when you play them, they are guaranteed to make the crowd go wild or they're simply impressed at your nearest and dearest or anybody who's listening to you play. So just before we hit the lesson, I would love to know what your favorite, most instantly recognizable bass line is. Please do let me know in the comments below. So the first bass line we're gonna look at is the legendary line to another one, Bites the Dust by Queen. I was lucky enough to play this many times in the West End production of We Will Rock You, so I know how this makes the crowd go wild firsthand. So this is what the bass line sounds like. So it's a two bar bass line which only has three notes to it. So the three notes are an A at the fifth fret, a G at the third fret, and the open E. So we're gonna split this into two parts. So the first phrase is simply G, sorry, A, G, E, like that. So I want you to go. And how we place it is it's placed just before the first beat of the bar. So we want to go one, two, three, four. So it's just after beat four and the open E lands on beat one. So it's three, four, better done like that. And then we go into two more quarter notes after that. So we end up with this, like this. So that's our first phrase that I want you to practice. Now, the next phrase I want you to play is this, which is three E's, ba -da -ba, like that. Get, try and get the rhythm really crisp as well. And then we go to the G, back to the E, and then to the A. So, and then again. So, to put the two, put the whole, Bass line together, we end up with this. So let's put this together with the drums and you'll hear what it sounds like. So guys, if you want to see all of the bass lines we're covering today written out in standard notation and tab, there's a free PDF cheat sheet which comes with this lesson. You can get it via our free bass players action pack. There's a link in the description below where you can get instant access. Just go and look in the download and resources section and you can grab it there. So the second bass line we're going to look at, which is guaranteed to make the crowd go wild, is the introduction to Living on a Prayer by Bon Jovi. So let me take you through what it sounds like. So let's take this apart two beats at a time. So this is in the key of E. So we're gonna play an open E, and then we're gonna to jump to the octave, which is at the seventh fret on the A string. So we're gonna, and then we're gonna go down to the B, 
which is at the seventh fret on the E string, and then to the D, which is at the fifth fret on the A string. So these are the first four notes. So just play that to begin with, and try and get these notes as long as possible. And then the second part of the riff is two E's, and then the B, and then the D again like that. So this is the whole riff put together. It's a fantastic riff to play. Once you've learned that, I encourage you to learn it using the box shape or the minor pentatonic, and then you can move it around and play it in virtually any key you want. Or back to the open E. It's a super, super versatile bass riff once you get to know it. So let's play it with the drums so you can hear what it sounds like. So the next killer bass line which we're gonna look at is Under Pressure by Queen again. So this is a prime example of how fantastic bass lines do not have to be complicated. So even if you've been only been playing a few weeks, I guarantee you can get this under your fingers. So this is what the bass line sounds like. So let's take that apart. So it's only got two notes in it, which is a D at the 12th fret on the D string, and then an A, which is at the 12th fret on the A string. So let's do the first three notes of it, which is simply this, one and two, like that. So just play that first of all, and then we'll do the next three notes, which is like that. So we're going to put that together. So we got ba 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 da ba da 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 da. And then the last note is simply dropping down to the A below like that. So it's so a great but very very simple riff. And the fantastic thing is, once you learn this, you can move this pattern all over the neck. It's a really versatile little bass line. So let's try this with the drum track. So guys, just before we hit bass line number four, I'd love to ask you, if you're enjoying this video lesson, please subscribe to the eBass Guitar YouTube channel because we release a video lesson just like this every single week, specifically designed for beginner to intermediate bass guitar players. There's a red button somewhere around this video where you can be the first to know when a new lesson goes live. So bass line four is Word Up by Cameo, and this is a fantastic four bar bass line or chord sequence, which which sounds like this, three, four. So let's take this apart bar by bar. So it starts on an F sharp at bar, or at fret nine on the A string with this pattern, one, two, and four. Just play that round of one, two, and three, four. So the first note is on beat one of the bar, and the second note is placed on beat two and, then let's go into the second bar, which is an E at fret seven with this rhythm. Like that. So that is two eighth notes. And then the last note or the third of the E's is placed on beat two and. So it's one and two and three, ba, ba, da, ba. So put the first two bars together, we end up with this. And then we go down to D at the fifth fret. So that is a D going to an E. So that is D, D, E, D. So the notes are placed on beat one, and then another D um, on beat two and, so one. And then the next E is placed on beat three, and then beat four and of the bar. And then that takes us back to the F sharp, and we have this original, we have this rhythm here, which is two eighth notes, and then the third F sharp is placed on beat two and. 
So this is the four bar bass line. So the great thing is once you've learned that, you can move it into multiple keys because this is a fantastic bass line to jam over. So quite often I will play this in the key of E just by shifting everything down two frets. And the same pattern works like that and so you can shift it into any key you want once you know the pattern and as I said it's fantastic to jam over so you can really start to break out in the gaps as well once you get a bit more confident so I'm going to play it along with the drums and then I'm going to start to break out a little bit over the top So the last killer bass line we're gonna look at today is the incredible Jack Bruce bass line from Sunshine of Your Love. And it sounds like this. Now this is based on a scale called the D blues scale. If you need any help with understanding music theory, we have a full music theory course over at E Bass Guitar designed especially for bass players, which will demystify all of the terminology that we're using today. So let me take you through this. So the first two notes are a D, and then we go down to a C, and back to a D. So those Ds are at fret 12 on the D string, and then the C is at fret 10. So this is the first phrase. Now the next three notes are an A, an A flat, and a G like that. And those can be found at the 12th, the 11th, and the 10th fret on the A string respectively. And so the phrase sounds like this. And those are placed off the beat on beats three and four and and beat one and of the next bar. So it's three and four and one and like that. And then let's put it together with the first phrase. So it sounds like this. Like that. So play those two phrases together. Like that. And then the last phrase is a D to an F sharp to an F rather, to a D again. So that D can be found at fret 10 on the E string. The F can be found at fret eight on the A string. And then back to the D there at fret 10 on the E string. So we end up with this phrase, one, two, one, two, like that. So let's put it all together with three parts of the riff. great thing is once we've got this down we can move this into different keys and in the original song they move it up to the chord of G but by shifting it down a string so, th so that's the first note the G octave on the G string and the same pattern completely applies so let's try this with the drum track so you can hear what it sounds like So guys, that's the end of today's bass guitar lesson. If you've enjoyed this lesson, make sure you download the free PDF cheat sheet where you can see all of the examples we covered today written out in standard notation and tab. You can find that in our free bass players action pack under the download and resources section. There is a link for that in the description below. Also, if you've enjoyed this lesson, I've got another two videos I would love you to check out. The first one is five legendary Paul McCartney bass 
base riffs and the second one is five legendary Motown riffs as played by the incredible James Jameson. The links for both of those lessons in the description below. Cheers, I'm Dean James from eBass Guitar and I will catch you on next week's lesson.